enjoy them. <laughs> uh, I'm quite relaxed because I've just finished a six hour lunch at uh, the Crocodile and uh, <laughs> I was feeling no pain. We had uh, 25 bottles for 11 of us. The usual suspects were all there, everyone was fond of myself. So we're going back to 1943, 70 years old, who's on them. So I'm, I'm very relaxed. <laughs> I'm, I'm very passionate to speak about wine, so I'll get on with it. Uh, I don't know, it's hard to uh, say good things about the BC industry. I'm often too critical, but I'm going to do a few accolades tonight, I think, because uh, I decided to just talk a little bit about uh, six different wine types that I think are particularly encouraging for the Okanagan. And I know some of the speakers have been able have their own ideas that I'm off track, which I probably am, but I'll just go through them. The first one I'm going to speak about is Chenin Blanc. I think uh, like there's a great potential for Chenin Blanc in D.C. You look at what's happened so far, like Manita 1968 by Row 13. Pretty impressive what they're doing there. I, I'm sure we've all tried their wine. They're making a great tinkle wine that's uh, very, very good value. They're also making now the jackpot which even though it's a little bit too alcoholic for me at 15.1, it's still a, a pretty good product. Uh, and the three tons an acre, uh, they're doing a good job. They're picking it too late on November the 8th just to get that richness, but uh, it would be a little bit better if they picked it earlier, I think. But it's showing such great potential. And they're also using part of it to make a late harvest Shannon log. And so uh, there's a good example of what's working. And uh, there's not very many other Shannon logs in the NBC, you've got, uh, for instance, Quail's Gate, uh, they're sourcing fruit from their own property in Donna de Soyuz. They're making their own Chenin Blanc and mixing 8% Sauvignon Blanc with it, which they shouldn't be doing, but uh, that's another story. But again, they're making a good product, less alcohol, very, very saleable and very popular. Uh, we've got Inescal Discovery Series making another, also Chenin Blanc. Very recently priced. These wines are a lot cheaper, like you're paying you $35, $40 for the for the Row 13, but there's a good commercial value there at $17. Like you get a 12% alcohol Chenin Blanc that goes so well with food. So uh, I'm a big fan of Chenin Blanc. So uh, think about it when you're next buying it and encourage people to grow it. Secondly, I'm going to talk a little bit about Riesling. I think uh, Riesling is uh, a great uh, varietal. It's so popular everywhere in the world. Uh, look at the examples that we've got here in the Okanagan. We've got uh, Tantalus that did such a great job landing in 1978 under the Pinot Reach vineyard that uh, uh, is not coming to fruition. That's uh, vines that are 35 years old that are showing fantastic. Uh, they've got the old vines freezing that sells out so quickly. Uh, that's the old vines that were planted in 1978. And just across the road there, Anne Sperling's got the same thing. Her property with her great-grandparents started 150 years ago. Also planted recently in 1978. It also is so fantastic. But those vines have such good balance and that they age so well. And uh, you can't go wrong. You can enjoy them uh, uh, as a just an aperitif. You can have them with food of all sorts and you can have them for dessert. But there's a lot of great Riesling out there now, like uh, the Lieutenant Governor's Awards of Excellence this year, the St. Uh was a winner of just so fantastic. They, they, it's just sort of like Eden Valley or Clare Valley, Australian Riesling, only better. Uh, but I love all the things that are being done there. Look at Cedar Creek, look what Daryl Brooker is doing there. Like He's got 2012 Riesling. He's got the right very selling at under $18. The wine's coming in at 9.9 .9 alcohol. It's got Fantastic, 10, 10 uh, total to 70, and about uh, 12 grams of residual sugar, but it tastes so dry. And of course, he's also got uh, his special reserve, uh, which is $25 more, but it comes in at 8 degrees alcohol, which is so refreshing. You can really drink a couple glasses of that, and uh, you, don't, you don't believe uh, that that wine's got sort of almost 25 grams of residual sugar because the acidity is at 12. It's just, uh, I'm really a big champion of what's happening with Riesling here. I think Riesling is doing well in Ontario and some of the other places as well, but I think uh, you can't go very far wrong uh, to promote and encourage people to be growing Riesling. How much time do I have? <laughs> But there's so many different people. Uh, I know Tim Posse, I just made a note here, he was so excited about Keller in the August 
issue with the courier saying that they were giving this right away at $11. Like, I'll give you, uh, even Tim Posse is recommending the reason for Peller at $11. It must be good. <laughs> I like uh, also what they're doing, like they're growing it even like in Sonoma. I mean, look at the scout vineyard in Orofino, and even what uh, like they're doing at a little, little farm. And they're doing a great reason there. And uh, so it's not just growing in one area, it's not growing in Black Sage and Golden Mile, but it's growing in quite a few areas. It should be encouraged. Uh, a third way I like to talk about is white blends. Uh, white blends, I think, are a little bit underrated. They started. Uh, a while ago, particularly with Sokum Blanc and Semillon, and uh, particularly Justin, uh, Jackson Drake, Sumac Ridge did a great job with it, Mission Hill followed. Some of the smaller wineries tried to do a blend of that, but uh, nobody would buy it because they didn't know what white heritage was, and they were able to sell Sokum Blanc as a single variety, or Semillon as a single variety, but they couldn't sell it as a mix, and so a lot of people abandoned it. Uh, but it's coming back, like uh, Claude Soleil just won at the BC Wine Awards that we judged uh, at the Yogan Fall Festival. It's the best wine of the festival with their capella. That's a beautiful wine at 12.3 alcohol. It just sings of freshness and 90% uh, so long, 10% percent Simeon. Like, that's a killer wine. Uh, we need to encourage more of these wines. And what I like about uh, these blends is that they're not experimenting with other things. The hottest thing at the moment, in my opinion, is the white blends with the Throne mixes. And uh, I opened in my house about a month ago uh, some old uh, ones from Twisted Tree, which is now Moon Cursor, that started in 2005. We opened up all the 2009 blends that they made. Uh, the Rosan Marsan blend was just sensational. You would swear that that's like a congruent. It was so oily and rich. Uh, even the Viognier was good uh, with the, the Roussan. Uh, they're planning more of that. It's a uh, uh, good proper growing getting about three tons an acre, and is about four tons an acre, but it's, it's economic, it's very popular. Uh, even uh, like uh, Yopan are making the Ava, they're doing a great job with that. It's a super wine, the 2011 had 78% uh, Yonnier and 11% of Roussan and Marsan. The 12 and 13 are gonna have 4% of Marsan. Uh, that's a real cover, you see uh, row 13 doing the same thing uh, with that thing, but I like also, that there's other white blends that you should be aware of. Uh, like, look at what uh, Sink that Bob Tennant had done. Quit laughing in the back there, David. You're done. Uh, look what they did uh, with their, their thing. They took uh, the Black Hills, got rid of it, took some of the property high up in Aramata, decided to plant El Marino and Verdeo, and they just uh, planted that in uh, 2008. Now they've got the first crop of it, the 2012, uh, that they uh, had out. That's, uh, uh, very, very exciting. They had before that also the Figaro, uh, which was again as the Roussan and Marsan had purchased grapes. But I think all of these uh, white blends are things to look at. So, a quick summary of the whites. I highly recommend Chenin Blanc, Riesling, and white blends. I understand that Pinot Gris is the biggest planter. It's okay, but it's always boring. Uh, <laughs> Chardonnay, Chardonnay uh, is planted. Some of them are good, but because you don't get enough uh, for all the brightness, they're all over -oaked. Uh, they're pretty good. There are some good ones. Uh, but uh, rather than go with what's happening, I think we need to look at these three different whites that are doing so well. On to the reds. Uh, reds, I like to, uh, in spite of Merlot being the biggest planet one, I think it's okay. It's a little bit boring as well. Uh, I'm a big fan of Pinot Noir. I think Pinot Noir is very, very successful in DC. I think it's going to get even more successful. Uh, you look at what Blue Mountain has done and started with. Sensational. Really underrated, uh, not necessarily friendly to the public in the early days. The new regime has become very friendly. They, they showed that they were very outstanding. They got invited down to, to Oregon for the Pinot Festival. They showed so well there. They're doing a great job. Look what's happened at Quailscape. Look what's happened at Cedar Creek. They're making great Pinot Noir. Look at all these smaller wineries, particularly in Aramata, that are just doing such an outstanding job. Like you've got uh, Foxtrot. They're making fantastic wine. I spent a full day there in October uh, trying every barrel. They're doing wild fermentation uh, and uh, wild yeast. It's unbelievable what they're doing. Maybe their wine is a bit expensive, $54.90 a barrel, but it's worth it. We had a dinner at the Wedgwood uh, last month. There was a sensational wine with Porcini Risotto. World class. Look at these other small wineries. Look at, take uh, Howling Puff and Lou Smith. 
He entered the lieutenant governor's one, he entered the county one, he tore out all his mortal graves, he put all his eggs in one basket with Pinot Noir, he's clever. He knows what he's doing, I hope he can keep that going every year. Look at Stonebow, look at that, they're winning some lieutenant governors. They, they're doing a fantastic job. But at all these competitions this year, like, there's cheap Pinot Noir, and, and there is not really cheap Pinot Noir anywhere in the world. You try and buy Pinot Noir anywhere. And uh, I know when Dave and I were down talking in Chile, we were talking about how Chile need to be more expensive with their Pinot Noirs because uh, uh, they're making such good Pinot down there as well. But uh, I think that we've got a great opportunity here. Like you see Red Brewster, you see uh, uh, even uh, Kelowna Artist Series, those wines are really cheap, 14, 15, 20 bucks. They're making great wine for Pinot Noir. Uh, I really support what's happening there. I could go on forever, but uh, I've got a list here of so many people I want to mention, but I'm not going to have time. Uh, I'm going to go on to Cabernet Franc. I think Cabernet Franc is certainly the Cabernet Sauvignon of the Okanagan. Uh, what I like about it is that I think we have an opportunity there to have one of the greatest wines in the world in making Cabernet Franc, of course, in Bordeaux, and you can have it in, on the right bank, and you can have it right from Merlot Chambon Blanc, and you can have it on the Bordeaux and Loire, but nobody's making better Cabernet Franc than we are here. Uh, it just needs a little bit more time, a little bit more minds, a little bit lessening of what they're doing. I love what uh, Senator Oldfield has done. Like she started uh, planting this way back in the mid '90s. She was smart. She didn't plant every so much. She went with Cabernet Franc, and we all told her she was stupid. She was clever. She did that, and it's right in every year was the Cabernet Sauvignon isn't. And so uh, we did a vertical of all her minds back to the mid '90s. They were all showing very well. And they're just getting better. In fact, she's got so much confidence now. She's done the 2010 Oldfield series, and uh, all her wines have been underpriced at about 17, 18 bucks. But the Oldfield series, she feels so confident. She's charging $35 a bottle, and it's probably worth it because she's got 50 year old uh, wines there from the diamond back over there on Black Sea. It's just really impressive uh, what she's doing. And uh, there's other people that are doing great work with Cappy Frog. Look what Murray Allen has done since they planted theirs in 1998. It's always the first wine that they have that sells out. I love uh, what other people are doing. Uh, Poplar Grove, they did. Uh, they got the Tenth Governor's Award for the 2009. And he was 15-3, and I criticized them with Elon Uh They brought in the 2010 at 14-8, and they tell me that the 2011 they done at about 14-3. Like they're getting the alcohol down there. They're realizing that biggest isn't best, and I think that the flavor is there. They're going to be able to bring that wine in a great flavor and uh, have a nice drinkable product uh, that we should be looking forward to and promoting because that's got a lot of potential like every front. There's nobody else that's doing it better and uh, and it's doing well in plants too. You look at, uh, for instance, uh, Jackson uh, Dumb Tricks, um, Don and, and his wife and Sarah, like they got a new winery there called Mina. They've got a new wine called Hypothesis. It's 40% Cabernet Frog. And it's a uh, blend, but it's mainly Cabernet Franc, and it shows fantastic potential for in each other. Like all these blends of Cabernet Franc are also good. But let's leave that and go on to Syrah. I'm not taking up too much time. But Syrah, it would be my uh, red favorite, I think. I think that uh, everybody loves Syrah. I think whether you know about wine like I do or you know nothing about it, everybody likes it because it's so attractive. It's got that spice that is capable of being in so many styles. Like it can be. Uh, like almost a big brasso type, uh, roasty, uh, heavy kind of character from Black Sage, or it can be sort of light, like Nichols started that way up in Aramana. He started that way back in 1989, and sort of like our own style. People are collecting his wine still today, and like that's, you go from that style all the way down to what they're doing uh, in Black Sage. Like everybody's making great, great Syrah. I can name here off the top of my head 30 people that are doing great Syrah. And uh, I just think that uh, that's a, one of the champion. I cannot, okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I had fun talking about this. I just think that we need to be a little bit more open-minded about what we can do here because to get people to recognize these wines, we have to make excellent wine. And I think to just make uh, sort of a mediocre Pinot Gris or to make a Sauvignon Blanc with eight grams of residual sugar, that will make it, David. I know you're going to talk about rosé, but rosé or some of these other things are great too, but not today. Thanks a lot. <laughs>